Hey, everyone. Thanks for watching the Get Your Mind Right podcast. I'm Brian Mendenhall, President and CEO of Family First Life Central Division. Guys, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow us on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, or any other place you watch your podcast. Enjoy, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you guys for joining us on the Get Your Mind Right podcast. We have a special guest today, Josh Harris. <laughs> hey, man, welcome. I appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You are extremely busy, a busy man. Yes. You crushed it the other day at our, our conference in Philadelphia. Everybody said you were one of their favorite speakers, so wow. I appreciate you coming. Wow. Humble. Humbled by that, yeah. Yeah, man. Hey, li listen, talk to me a little bit because the people want to know, who is Josh Harris? I mean, I know you played professional football, right? Mm -hmm. But if you could tell us a little bit about who you are, that'd be great. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I think uh, it's probably important to start there. I uh, played college football at Bowling Green State University. I was Urban Meyer's first quarterback. Um, drafted to the Baltimore Ravens in 2004. Uh, spent a little bit of time with the Browns, 04, 05. Spent a little bit of time with the Giants. Went to Canada. Has played in the Arena League. Um, I've been married 19 years. I got two Woo! sons. Yeah, two sons. Uh, my, my wife was an All-American high jumper at Ohio State, and my, my sons are are three sport athletes um, in high school, one's in the eighth grade, both pretty good players. So sports and family is a huge part uh, of my deal. Uh, mm -hmm. That's why that work-life balance was so critical yesterday when I brought that up. Yeah. And, uh, you know, just who is Josh Harris? I'm a cer cerebral thinker, um, linear thinker. I'm not super creative. I know my strengths. I'm honest with myself, right? I know the things I'm not good at, and I generally don't do those things. Um, but, but ultimately... Uh, I've been, I was introduced to life insurance in 2012, actually probably before that, probably two or three years before that, but got licensed in 2012. Recommendation of a buddy of mine, and um, and uh, he told me that I would do well. He knew, he knows me intimately. He says, you would crush it. He said, you should do this because uh, once you have your license, nobody can own you. Um, and so That's good. I was like, what do you mean by that? Well, once you have your license, all you need is a company that will allow you to sell their product. So, boom, I get my license. I start on a part-time basis. I've been uh, in the game uh, full-time since 2014. Wow, that's that's pretty dope. Hey, you mentioned work-life balance. Talk to me a little bit about what that means to you. So, um, you know, a lot of times, let me make sure I say this right, a lot of times people will plan their life around their work. And I actually do it the other way. I plan my work around my life. And it's because... Uh, it's, it's always was been very important to myself and my wife that the principles and the values and the lessons that our sons get come from us. So she didn't work outside of the home until both boys were in school. And um, we, I mean, the only time I have not been their coach was when they're two years in middle school, seventh and eighth grade. So I'll coach them from the time they were five years old. So people that say, you know, I can't, you can't coach your kids. It's not true. Maybe they can't coach their kids, but we're all going to cry when they're done playing for me. Wow. You know, so um, very, very close family. Um, and it just means a lot to me to be very present. I say, always say, all say, I always say presents are greater than presence. That's you good. know, so being with my kids and helping them through the journey, imagine all these different things, not just athletically, but the things socially that are going on, you know, to have two black boys, you know, you got to make sure that you're giving them the lessons and, and helping them understand how to process information because you're not always going to be there. So if I can teach them how to think and how to have, you know, the escape plan, you know, or whatever, how to respect authority, how to play the game, the politics, how to play the game, like, you know, you got a better chance. Yeah. Well, wow, that's pretty dope. So with me, I did the short term pain for long term yeah. gain thing. Yeah. So early on in my career, I was out helping, you know, 20, 30 families a week, sometimes Woo. 15 families a week, like working hard mm -hmm. where my little guys are like, you, you going on appointments again. I'm like, I am, mm -hmm. but it's because I'm doing it now so that we can spend time together later. Right. Mm -hmm. And I've been able to enjoy some of the spoils of, you know, sure. the, the work that I've been able to do the last two seasons. I coached my son's basketball team. Now I know nothing about basketball, <laughs> just like, you know, the stuff that I see, but dude, I'm on YouTube. I'm like, I'm going to learn today. Yeah. And then I'm out there and we almost won a championship. We lost by one game. Yeah. So, but the, to share those experiences, man, like when you mentioned work-life balance, I'm like, that's pretty dope because I've been able to do that, yeah. you know? And 
it feels good. If I could go back, honestly, um, it, it's really important now, more important now. I started early. Yeah. In my brain, I told myself I need to be there for everything. But when if if I would have been grinding more yeah. Yeah. when they don't have a memory of mm -hmm. daddy not being there, right, then we would be in a different place than we are now. But now I'm in it and I can't I won't have my life back. Correct. Until they're out of high school. That makes sense. Now so so I got a, a 16, soon to be 16 year old. I got a nine year old and I got a two year old. Ooh. Crazy, like seven Ooh. years apart, right? So I'm like, <laughs> I've done, I've done each thing like three times, yeah, like yeah, yeah. the four wheelers, the this, the that. And mm -hmm. in the beginning, again, I couldn't do it. Now I can. It's pretty dope. Let's talk, let's talk about mindset because this is the get your mind right podcast, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what things do you do to keep your mind right? Because a lot of people struggle with that, man. And, and in this business, the only two things that you really can control is your attitude and your activity mm. and attitude. I feel is everything. So some of the things that I do, um, to get my, to get my mind right is uh, I keep my reason why in front of me. So my, my family is what fills my gas tank, right? Uh, I'm not motivated by money. I'm not motivated by, I'm, I like experiences more than I like money. Mm -hmm. Um, I like, um, I like to make sure that we have a comfortable in our and comfort changes, you know, the, the you know comfortable lifestyle, but that changes over time. Um, but the things that I do to 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 get my mind right is understand that I am uh, a a model to my kids. I wanna I wanna model what I want them to be. Again, it, lucky for me, um, lucky or unlucky, however you want to look at it, I got two boys, and so uh, I feel like it's ultra important that I show them what it is to be a good leader in the home. It's good. Um, and because if they are um, lucky enough to get married and have kids of their own someday, they need to know what it looks like. I, I was telling you before we got on camera, I told my oldest son who will be 17 uh, next in May, uh, bro, if you don't do your kids like your mom and I have done you, I'm going to fight you because it has been hard. It's been hard. It's given Not sacrifices. Easy. Yeah. You know, I know that we could be doing better. I know that we could be doing so much better, going faster, growing faster. Um, but I know that I'm in it. I'm going to see it through the finish line before coming back. Right. And that means sacrifice for myself, for my wife, for the boys. Like, so if they're not getting these lessons during the time frame, we're going to have to, we're going to have a meeting of the minds. That's, that's so good. <clears throat> Actually, um, so I always say like when you hire agents, right, they do half of whatever you do. Mm. So if you, if you're killing it, they're going to do half of what you do. Well, if you relate that to your kids, you're leading by example. It's not even the half, like they're going to do a lot of what you do or they're going to do what you do. If, even if it's good or bad, right. if that makes sense. So, man, I'm leading by example. Yeah. I'm out here helping people, serving people, trying to be, you know, inspiration to people, empowering people, and they watch all of it. And we talk about all of it too. Like I had my son ask me one time, um, I had a, I had a commission at, at my previous company come in. It was going to be a thousand dollar commission. My kid was probably 14 at the time. And he was like, so, um, I heard you just say you made a thousand dollars. And to me, that sounds like a lot of money, but is it really? It gave me an opportunity to be like, so let me break it down to you like this. It costs us this much to live here. It costs us this much for the AAU tournament that we just signed you guys up for. It costs us this much for the basketball that we bought you. It's $80 basketball. Dinner is about to cost $52. So you tell me, <laughs> is it a lot of money? No. Right? So, so, but I've been able to have those kind of conversations sure. with them. I tell them all the time right now, as he's growing, he's grown eight inches and probably... 70 pounds in the last two years i'm like bro you gotta have money when you grow up because you like to eat good <laughs> you like to eat good you like to dress well you like to eat good so just let me just prepare you like you can't be a mediocre um income earner you can't that's, do it that's good mm -hmm. that's good oh man Look, all right, let's, let's transition. <laughs> let's transition into the business. Cause I could talk to you all day. You, you fun to talk to. 
Um, let's transition into the business. What type of stuff are you doing? I know we transition as a company, mm -hmm. opening up this whole new world of telesales. And I know you've been crushing it on the telesales side. Talk to me a little bit about what that what that looks like for you. So uh, my business partner and I, shout out to Derek Richardson, we have been working at building uh, a telesales team since 2016 with with more breaks than us working at it, right? Mm -hmm. But ever since the new telesales live dial deal, it has rejuvenated, re-energized. It actually has given us a game plan because, you know, historically this is a belly to belly business mm -hmm. sitting down at the kitchen table. Uh, that's how people have done business, you know, over the years. But um, w when it came to building a telesales team, there wasn't a lot of direction and instruction behind it. Uh, there wasn't a lot of structure uh, behind it. When you when people are wanting to do it over the phone, it's probably because they want to do it at home, which creates division, not a collective. And so it's been it was difficult to train. It was difficult to hire to that. And so now all of a sudden, even though we have people that are fired up about being able to sell over the phone, nobody gets going. Right. Yep. Nobody gets going. So now having the live dial deal where you and, and Mark me says it all the time. It's a community. I've, I've seen a couple things happen for me personally, when I'm dialing in front of other people, which I generally haven't besides my business partner who I share an office with, it has made me be sharper, yep. right? Where now my uh, rebuttals are better, faster, quicker, right? And when I'm not fast and quick on the, on the rebuttal, I know it when I get off the phone, I'm like, ah, wasn't sharp. And I'm saying it out loud for people to hear so they know how important it is for you to be a pro, right? And and the other thing that has happened is that, I don't know what the magic is behind it, but watching somebody else get clicked on, hung up on, um, yep. and being able to laugh at that, yep. right? Because it used to hurt my soul every time I was hung up on. I'd rather have a door slammed in my face than be hung up on the phone. I don't know why, but it's true. And so now watching other people experience that, I know it's not personal. It has helped me immensely. And so I'm super fired up about the live dial because now I can bring people to that community and understand that if they're willing to do, you still got to do the work. You got to pick up the phone. Yeah. If you pick up the phone, it's going to allow us to help you in real time. And what's going to happen to your learning curve is going to go from here to here where we can get you into a breakout room. We can, we can kind of coach you up and teach you, you know, what to say, how to say it, when to say it, you know, what type of questions to ask. If you have your chat open, while you're on the phone with a client, you're being fed lines. You don't have to know anything. Know how to log into your portal. That's what I'm telling people. When your writing numbers come in, know how to log into your portal. Set up your portal and know how to log in. Then get on the live dial and let us teach you. I got a, I got a script that's for a baseline, a foundation. I don't want you to read the script because you got to be a human first. But log into the live dials, pick up the phone, and we'll feed you the line. Well, what carrier do I sell? Don't matter. We'll tell you. <laughs> Oh, man, I, I got to tell you what I've seen is the same exact thing. But I, even being more detailed, I've been able to see agents that have been they've been procrastinating forever, mm -hmm. not wanting to buy leads, not wanting to get on the phones, not feeling comfortable where we had live dials here, live dials there. But now coming together and being one strong team, all working together, them being able to see, like you just said, somebody being hung up on. They're like, wow, even the guys that are going and helping 40 families a month. They're real people. Yep. Not everybody tells them yes. People tell them no. I can't get over this one story. Like this happened like a week and a half ago. Mm. You know, I had a brand new girl just came over from a practice company. She's excited. She got like all these people coming with her. Right. And they're not, they're already at a higher commission, like double what they were. Right. But they weren't selling much there. Mm. They come here, they see somebody get hung up on, but they see the person on live camera say, <laughs> They hung up, called the person back. When they called the person back, the person like, hello, what are you doing? You're calling me back again? Mm. They they sent, talked to the person, explain everything, say, hey, you filled out this form for this information, end up doing a presentation with the person, end up helping the person and so, you know, helping them get insurance. At the end, the person is like, thank you so much for helping me, getting me covered. And her jaw dropped. She's like, oh, I could do this. Oh, it's about to go down. And that's all with, think about the confidence that just grew 
in her from seeing that happen and knowing now she could do the same thing. It's wild because, again, we talked about this business historically being belly to belly. And I know that people have done ride alongs and stuff like that. But generally speaking, a lot of your top performers are don't always have people with them in the in the field. Right. You mm-hmm. might take somebody out in the field with you a couple of times, a couple few times, and then, boom, you're off doing your own thing again. So when you talk to people that are top performers and you ask them, what is it that you do? They normally stick pretty close to the company line by leads. You know, even the whole thing, buy leads, set appointments, <laughs> protect families, right? But there's so much that goes into those three things. So now you actually can see it live. How long does it take you to hit the button again after you get hung up on, after you get yelled at, after you get cussed out, after you make a sale? How long before you're actually back on the line helping somebody else. That's good. Right? So now all of a sudden they get to see the whole thing being done because your camera is on. Your camera is on. The wins, the losses, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I am a firm believer in in, in every situation. You got to take the good and the bad in every situation. So this has just made it more visible, uh, has brought more connectivity to the deal. It really has created a community. Um, I see a lot of the same people every day. I be missing the people like I haven't been in the live dial for two days and well three days because I'm not normally in there on Sunday anyway but and I feel it I'll be like dang I miss my home as soon, as soon as I log <laughs> back in they're gonna be like Josh we missed you yeah. what's up so it's 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 wild man that that's so crazy so you mentioned something in the beginning when we talked about um you know people having cameras off and stuff I love the culture that we created where you come in everybody's camera has to be on, right? Mm -hmm. Where that means you have to show up to work. You got to do your hair. You got to put a shirt on. You got to brush your teeth. And you're looking and being prepared to go to work because you're working. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And and, and again, it's not not even stuffy, man. You guys, you still have people, I'll go to work in a hoodie, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm still presentable, right? I'm presentable and I'm prepared for the day, right? When you think about, when you think about the type of income that is made uh, that is made by top performers in this industry you you really got to respect it you got to respect the whole deal like you got to respect the hustle you got to respect the grind we are compensated by our ability to serve people and solve problems so if you're not making that much money it's cuz you're not solving enough people's problems mm. you're not serving enough people and so you know when you think about that it's a bunch of little things that go into somebody actually being successful. I hear, I hear the philosophy. You got to dress for success. I don't know, man, you got a t-shirt on today. And so do I, right? I wear back. It's about to be nice. I'll have basketball shorts on regularly at the office. Um, so I don't think that your dress necessarily creates the situation uh, of your success. But what I do believe is you have to be prepared to go and do your job. You got to be a professional. And so if you are a person who um, feels different based on the way that you are dressed, then you do need to dress for success. If you're a person who can get into the mode and the flow and uh, and shorts and a T-shirt, then you don't have to dress for success because you are already you've already mastered that part of the deal. That's good. That's that's good. Hey, so we're hiring everywhere across the whole entire country and being that. We're recruiting agents across the entire country. And being that we're the best at what we do, um, offer the highest comp, no contracts, exclusive leads, best training. Like we have the, there's a lot of good people here crushing it, right? Mm -hmm. Knowing that we have all that, we can be selective on the people that we're looking to work with. Would you say? Yes. Now, if you were, if you were hiring, which you are, If you were recruiting agents, which you are, (laughs) what would be the type of person that you're looking for? Who are you looking to partner with? So it's funny that you asked that question. I I literally just um, heard this on John Wetmore's podcast the other day. He said, I need three things. I need you to be coachable. I need you to be a man or woman of your word. Do what you say you're going to do. And if you can't do what you, if something changes where you can't do what you say, just communicate. I, I, I felt that in my soul because that's all like we are humans and life happens, 
right? Things do happen. There was an accident on the on the road, you know, when I was coming here. Had me later than I wanted to be. Ten minutes later than I wanted to be. These things happen. That's not an excuse. That's a reason. That's actually real what happened. And these things do happen to people. But do you communicate? Are you a respecter of someone else's time? Mm. You know, because it is a it's a time investment. It's an emotional investment. You really are actually business partners with this person. They are pouring into you, which means they are giving of themselves right to try to get you to where it is that you actually want to go. And so it seems only fair that you would a be coachable, b be a man of your word, a uh, man or a woman of your word and do what you say. And if something does change, just communicate, period. It's that simple. Those, anything else I feel like I can work with. I got to be honest, if I'm just putting myself in the shoes of somebody watching this that doesn't have their insurance license or that does have their insurance license, I'm watching you and I'm thinking, I'd like to work with this guy. Mm. If they actually wanted to work with you, how would they actually get a hold of you? You can find me on IG. I think it's uh, Joshua Harris 5 on Instagram. You can call my phone, 614-437-9050. You can find me anywhere, really. I'm on TikTok now, as Mark uh, Mark, uh, Tarolia said yesterday. Um, I think that's Joshua one and five, but just, I mean, it's not hard, man. You can Google it. Joshua Harris. I'm the one that played at Bowling Green and you can find me any kind of way. Um, but we're looking forward to working with great people that, that is, that is excited about their lives being changed by an opportunity. If you're not looking for your life to be changed. And and when I say your life to be changed, I don't mean now all of a sudden you're making six figures. That's not everybody's goal. Some people's, I got a, I got a lady that's in Illinois that I'm really excited to work with who is um, big time philanthropist. She's giving back to the community, volunteering all the time. She's like, gosh, I just want to be able to do a couple thousand dollars a month to be able to help out my household. They don't even have any kids yet, but she wants to make it easier on her husband. And to me, that is the perfect type of person. Also, the perfect type of person is a person who's like, man, I need more money and I need more time. I don't want to go to work at this corporate gig anymore. They don't value me. I don't feel appreciated, whatever, whatever, whatever. I'd like to make one hundred fifty, two hundred thousand dollars dollars $200,000, whatever. I'd like to make 60000 whatever the case is, but I want to do it on my own terms. That's also the perfect type of person. So when I put out stuff, I'm talking about full-time, part-time, spare time. But when you do talk to me, about what it is that you want. We're talking about be coachable because you're going to tell me what you want. I'm going to help you get it, but you got to do the work, right? So if you say, I want a couple thousand dollars a month, I want five, six, seven, I'm not going to allow you to believe that you're going to make full-time income on part-time hours. I won't allow you to believe that because that's not true. That's not me being a man of my word, right? And so, you know, this, anybody can do this, but not everybody will. I, I believe that. I double that. Hey, listen, man, it's been a pleasure having you on, and I'm sure I'll have you on again. Next step for you, we got to get you to vice president. For sure. Vice president is helping about 150 families a month. Yep. I think you should be there in the next month or two with how you're growing, the people that are coming on, the quality people that yep. you're bringing in. I appreciate being in business with you. Absolutely. All right, Looking thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.